repeat, not a pickle. He's Fred with a PH, and he's the co host of The Fred on Your Head Show. That's right, I'm Fred with a PH, and we're coming direct to you from the dot of noggin.com. And I gotta tell you, I am so glad you're here. Why? Because the Fred on Your Head Show without you is like sprinkles without ice cream. Capiche? No. Enough with the chatter. Let's go find the noggin du jour. In other words, today's host, El Grande Voce. Today's host and noggin du jour likes to draw, collects rocks, and is best friends with her sister, Jillian. She's Allison. Then Allison I shall find. Hold on a second, Fred. Huh? Today's other host and noggin du jour loves to ride her bike as a stuffed bear named Frosty and is best friends with her sister, Allison. She's Jillian. Double noggin. You know what that means? Twice the sparks. Allison and Jillian, here I come. <laughs> Allison? Jillian? Hi, Fred. What? She's Jillian. She's Allison. Oh. Capiche? I think I capiche, and I also think I want to sing both of you your very impersonal theme songs. Jillian! Jillian! Allison! Jillian, Allison, Jillison! This is Jillian Allison's very impersonal theme song. On the Fred on your that's right, what a PH. Now that your noggin's turned to noggin, let's get noggin along. On the bed on your head show. Head show, what did I say? With Allison and Jillian. As your host, we show your favorite shows. And hear about what you know. And play pickles to Pluto. And check out what's online. Hey, that last line didn't rhyme. But we mentioned online. It's like a bad So we get a lot of stuff we need to put on the show. Hello. So let's end this song before it gets too long. Too late. Jillian. Our host with the most, as you know. And now, without further ado, coming to you directly from Jillian Allison's forehead. It's the Fred and PH on your head show. Now, Jillian. I'm Allison. Uh, right. How about we get you two pickles so you can go to the dot and officially host the show? Sound like a plan, Allison? I'm Jillian. Uh, exactly. Commence pickleization, boys. Make it a double extra crunchy. <laughs> Welcome to the dot, girls. I know it's small, but it's right on the information superhighway. So it's close to everything, capiche? Happy. And since you're the host with the most, you get to hang with me for the rest of the show. Pretty swanky deal, huh, Allison? He's Jillian. Huh? Oh, of course. Now, here's Dirk Niblick. Spread on your head show. Hello, little cow hands and cow feet. Today's exciting story begins out west, where men are men and women are women and chicks and ducks and geese better scurry. On a spread of land known as the Ponderosa, I mean a spread called the Ruberosa, uh, what I meant to say was the Verbosa Rosa, where a man's word is boring. There's trouble at the Cartwrong Ranch. You ever notice how they never let horses talk on TV? That makes me really mad. Stop complaining, Rooney, or you'll lose your job on 60 Winnies again. Now, hold on just one goddamn minute. When Pa died, he wanted us to divide up the Verbosa Rosa amongst the four of us, right? Sure he did. That's right. Only trouble is the land is in the shape of a triangle. How in the name of Randolph Scott can you divide up a three-sided figure among four still-growing boys? Here's how I figure we do it. This here is my piece. These are for you fellas. What's anybody think? Methinks you are one unfair brother, cow. What's anybody think except you, Parnell? I think Parnell is right. Your piece is bigger than each of ours. Here's how we should divide it. I ain't overly delighted with that. I'll take this piece. This is for Cal, this is for Parnell, and this for Little Mo. That's not fair. I get the smallest piece of land. Guess who doesn't give a rat's nose? Here's how to do it. I'll take this, McLean gets this, Cal gets this, and Parnell gets this. Hold your thoughts, little brothers. We're gonna have to call the sheriff and let her decide how to do this. 
And that's just what the Cartwrong boys did. They summoned Fat Garrett, the sheriff from an earlier episode. It's over there to the left, the door with the picture of the pony on it. Well, are you kids still trying to divide up a triangle into four pieces the same size? Yep. We want you to tell us which way is even for everybody. That's easy. This one ain't fair. Neither is this or this. And this one ain't either. The answer is none of these is fair. Yeah, well, so what do we do? Well, how should I know? I don't know nothing about birthing no triangles. Yeah, what is right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then what are you good for, Sheriff? Well, I know when I'm stumped, and I know an expert I can call on to help us. And who might that be, pray tell? One of the smartest Matherados I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. What's his name? The Siblick of the Math Brigade. Who? Sheriff Fat Garrett? Well, I should say I do remember you. You were in one of my favorite episodes. What's that you say? You have a problem. I'll be happy to help. Good. I'll send my horsey around for you. Well, if it isn't Mr. Ed. Close, but no carrot. The sheriff sent me for you. Am I going to ride you all the way to the Verbosa Rosa? No, I've got a cab waiting. <laughs> Keep the chaff. Yes, sir, boss. Thank you, boss. Thank you very much, boss. That's very kindly, boss. Thank you, boss. So you see, Lieutenant Niblick, that's the problem. How do we divide a three-sided figure equally among four conniving brothers? It can be done, folks, and one way involves dividing this triangle into four triangles of the same size. Hard to believe, but true. Think about it. And you kids think about it, too. Hmm. How do we get four triangles to fit inside one triangle? We'll be back so fast it'll make your head swim. Or at least tread water. Use your noodle. Hey, partners, I reckon you're watching the Fred on Your Head show. Capiche? He's your host. Hey, Fred. Uh, yeah, Allison. She's Jillian. Right. What has two arms, two wings, mm -hmm. two tails, mm -hmm. three heads. Uh-huh. Three bodies. Yes. And eight legs. I am not even going to attempt to answer this one. So tell me, Giles, what has two arms, two wings, two tails, three heads, three bodies, and eight legs, huh? A man riding a horse holding a chicken. Ah, good one, Jillian. Allison. Uh, I knew that. Now check this out. Jillian, Allison, Dirk Niblick. <laughs> Have you, Jaspers, figured out how to divide the triangle up equally? I must admit I haven't, but I didn't learn anything in school because I knew from an early age that I wanted to be whatever it is I am. Have you figured it out? No. Show us. What if I did this? Connect the midpoints of these two sides. That just divides it in two. How about I repeat that effort? You have smited in thrice. Beg pardon, Parnell, you Shakespearean thespian. He says you cut it in three. Wait, I get it. What if we cut it yet again? It's for you, Parnell. Oh, hey. That's hey, nice. Nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Nice. Now, Phone, it's a dandy. Lieutenant Niblick, you've just saved our ranch. Now every one of us has a fair and equal part. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant Dirk Niblick. You are a mathematical wizard. Oh, just a little plain geometry. Nothing to it, really, when you use your old noodle. Guess what, everyone? Guess what has happened to your brother, Parnell? What is it, Parnell? It would appear to be good news. I'll bet a cat's whisker it is. I'm going to New York. Joe Papp wants me to do Shakespeare in Tribeca. You can keep my land, you... you cowboys. Well, now, don't that beat all? We finally solved the problem, and Parnell hightails it to the big city, so we gotta start all over again. No, you don't! Look at this! He's left you with his triangle! So? I see. Sure, we just divide it up the same way. You could do that, all right. Okay, Cowell gets this piece, McLean gets this one, I'll take this, and... You've you got, got another triangle, triangle left over, over little Mo, you miscreant. So I do. 
You just divide it up again. Of course. Watch. But we've still got a triangle left over, even though it's a smaller triangle. Yes, but by repeating the process, you can make it as small as you like and effectively divide the ranch in thirds. Looks like a good example of recursion to me. Whoa, sure recursion, that's a big word for over. Wow. <laughs> now, if you want to start all over again, there are other ways to divide a triangle into thirds. You can even divide this equilateral triangle into three congruent triangles if you so desire. How do we do it? I think I'll let you ponder that. Give me a call when you get it. I'll be writing on now, my work here being done. Thanks for everything, Lieutenant Niblick, you cutie. You saved the day again. But tell me, how do you make three triangles out of one? You puzzle it out too, Sheriff. It'll be good for you. Why, you low down side widened slag heap. For two cents, I'd run you out of town on a turd rail, you. And as the sun and dirt sink slowly in the west, we bid a fond adieu to one of America's favorite mathematically endowed heroes, Dirk Niblick of the Math Brigade. You know what else I hate? Guys who sit on your back when you're trying to think. And Rooney, the semi faithful horse. I'm Allison. I'm Jillian. And we're, we're the, the hosts. Host. And we have nine cats. We're going to give away four, and we're going to have fun. We like cats because they're cute, and they like being scratching out your ear. And we um, like cats so much, we want to see an animal adventure. For the elephant, this is the end of the line for food. But for the East African dung beetle, this is just the beginning. This cool African insect is busy recycling animal waste back into the environment. Once an animal has left its you-know-what behind, the beetle attacks the pile. Using its shovel-like head, it bulldozes a ball of dung off the pile, which it rolls away with its rear legs and buries it. Undigested food in the ball becomes lunch, as well as a nest for the female to lay her eggs. Gross? Not really. The dung beetle is like the garbage collector of the wild, cleaning up the mess and fertilizing the soil. Hello? Make way! <gasps> Coming through! Huh? Nice noggin! Hey. Whoa! Uh, eight head a tet with Fred! That means head to head with Fred. The tete du jour is the Sphinx. Hello, Sphinx. Hello, Fred. How you doing? Can't complain. Really? I can't. My back is killing me. I've got bunions on my feet from hopping so much. My ears ache. I got a cavity. I've lost all the feeling in my schnoz, and my bills are way past due. I'm sorry to hear that, Fred. No biggie. Anyways, enough about me. Let's talk about you, you big Egyptian monument, you. I know you've got the head of a pharaoh, a king, and the body of a lion. And I know you were carved out of limestone, but that's about it. So, can I ask you a few questions, huh? Can I, can I please, huh? Sure, Fred. You can ask me anything you want, and I'll try to answer as best I can. Go ahead. But to be honest, there's a lot about me that remains a serious mystery. Sphinx? What was that? That was my mystery music. Like it? Very classy, very classy. Thanks. Now fire away. Okie dokie, Mr. Sphinx. Uh, how old are you? Well, Fred, I'm at least 4,500 years old. Whew. But some people believe that I'm over 10,000 years old. Yikes. My true age is unknown. Whew. Well, you look great. Now, why were you built? Well, Fred, some people believe I was built in front of the pyramids to protect the pharaohs buried inside. And some people believe that I was built for more practical purposes, like navigation and power generation. Nobody really knows. Oh, very interesting, Sphinx. And now, my last question, which I and millions of people right now are wondering, Sphinx, where's your nose? Oh, my poor nose. I used to love my schnoz, Fred. Here's the deal. Some people believe that my nose was shot off by Napoleon's men in the 1700s. And some people believe that the Turks used my nose for target practice in the early 1200s. 
Again, Fred, the true answer remains a mystery. I said it remains a mystery. A very interesting, Senor Sphinx. I didn't know any of that before. What do you know? <laughs> Watch it, Pickle. I am not a pickle. Then what are you? That, my dear Sphinx friend, is a mystery of its own. Fred, I like your style. Thanks. I like yours, too. Hey, if you want to find out more about the mystery of the Sphinx, go to the library or log on to the Internet. Capiche? Ciao, Sphinx. Thanks for your time. Call me if you solve any of those mysteries, huh? Hey, where'd he go? The Ted with Fred. Oh! No, sure. I'm Jillian. I'm Allison. And I'm Mr. Big Voice. Why are you here? I wanted to ask you girls what it's like to be twins. So, what's it like to be twins? Um, sometimes cool, sometimes bad. Bad? Poor qua. Uh, because we fight and we have to share the same room. Cool. Poor qua. Because we like some things and we always have a buddy next to you and play with each other. Mm -hmm. Do you girls like the same things? Mm, some, no, some, some of them, but in sports only. <laughs> but we, we like different music groups. I like 98 Degrees. I like Actually Boys. So basically, you guys look alike and are alike. No, we are. Um, we, we look, look alike, alike, but we are different. I get it. Now, tell them to check this out. Check this out. Looking at each other. Do kids have jobs in Ecuador? Hola, mi nombre es Conejo Lema Uripacha. Yo tengo tres años de edad y vivo en las montañas andinas del Ecuador. For chores, I make sure the plants grow nicely and tank up the ripe corn to dry. I also like to draw. This is designed for a man's shirt. On Saturday, I go to the market to sell clothes. Other kids sell crafts, too. When we have nothing to do, we play around the marketplace. In Escocia, where do they hide the kids when they play to the hidden? My name is Katie, and this is my hub. And you need a password to go into it. And it's... In Scotland, we like to build tree huts to get away from it all. If I'd, say, been upset at school, or I wanted a bit of peace and quiet, I could come here and... Sometimes we bring up snacks. When we want to get away from our parents, we build huts like that behind me. It's good fun building them. Quite a good heart because it's well camouflaged. This one's a good one to be secreted. Do kids have hideouts where you live? Looking at each other. Looking at the world. Fred on your head! I'm Jillian. And I'm Allison. And I'm Fred. With a PH, and I'm not buying that for one second. I happen to know for sure that you are Jillian and you are Allison. How did you figure it out, Fred? Well, girls, when you study noggins as closely as I do, you notice the slightest detail. For instance, Allison, you have 17 freckles on your nose, where your sister Jillian has a mere 14. Capiche? Capiche. Now, if I only figured that out at the beginning of the program, things would have gone a bit more smoothly. Anyways, you two have been fantastic hosts, and to show you my true and utter appreciation for your devotion and dedication, I'm going to play a reprise of your very impersonal theme song. Hit it! Jillian! Allison! Jillian, Allison, Jillison! This is Jillian Allison's very impersonal theme song. On the thread on your head show. That's right, what a PA! Bye, everybody! Goodbye! Hope you had fun! We had a ball! See you later! Ciao! Show. That show, what the message? We hope you enjoyed watching the thread on your head show with... Jillison! ...as your host... It's the Fred what a pH on your head show. Don't forget to 
Check out the next thread on your head show.